disclaimer. This video is a project for school. Obviously. So, those of you who thought this is turning into an what you call an educational channel. No, not even close. So, moving on to the actual video. Hello everyone, and welcome to T1GWK News. I'm your host, that one guy nobody knows. And today, I am going to be interviewing a very special guest. Please welcome, Tsar Nicholas II. Ugh. Two boy Americanians. Oh, привет! Меня зовут Император Николай Сарой. Очень приятно. Насалмен Деленит. Zdar Nicholas II was born on May 18, 1868, at Alexander Palace, Sorsko Yeselo, St. Petersburg, Russian Empire. He was composed of German and Danish descent. Last ethnically Russian ancestor was Grand Duchess Anna Petrovna. He had five other siblings, however, he was the first child to inherit the emperor's throne. Growing up, he was educated by private tutors. He was particularly interested in the study of history and mastering foreign languages. However, he had a challenging time grasping economics and politics. Eesh. It's already a bad sign. In honor of his father, who became emperor in 1881, Nicholas decided to join the army at the age of 19. This was a passion of his throughout his life. After his father's death in 1894, Nicholas became Russia's new emperor. Although he was very intelligent and was taught many things, Nicholas was not prepared at all for the responsibilities and tasks he would have to carry out. Again, this is a pretty bad sign. Within just a month after his dad's death, Nicholas got married. Whoa there, Nick. That was kind of fast. His new wife, Princess Alex of Hesse, or known in Russia as Empress Alexandra, became a huge role in Nick's life. They were a good match. I mean, they both shared the same beliefs. They were both very religious and believed in autocracy. They later ended up raising five kids. That's a lot of kids. Nicholas also thought that he had the God-given right to rule Russia. He ruled the second largest empire at the time, only behind the British Empire. He also supervised the construction of the Trans-Siberian Railway, connecting European Russia to the eastern half. However, happiness doesn't last forever. The Russo-Japanese War, yes, it's actually called that, occurred in 1904. This war was a dispute between the territory and control of Korea. You see, Russia started to expand its land and its industries, so much so that Japan got worried for its land. Therefore, Japan made its first attack on Russia. This war concluded in 1904 with the Russians losing. After the battle, the Russians were frantic because their new leader couldn't even defend their own empire. People lost faith in him, and eventually, it caused a revolution. This triggered Nicholas and he was all like Catch me outside, how about that? and refused to reform unless it was under his conditions. Then that triggered the people and then <laughs> Just kidding, that didn't happen. It would have been cool though. But what did happen was Nikki finally accepting that he had little power and he had no full control over Russia. And he also promised the people that he would change. Did that happen? No, not at all. In fact, it was just the opposite. When World War started in 1914, it really showed all of his weaknesses. The Russian army did so poorly and had many casualties because of his leadership. And of course, Russia resulted in defeat. Nicholas was then forced to give up his throne to something called the Bolshevik Party. The Bolshevik Party took over his throne because of his awful leadership. He was so ignorant to change and so 
and so set to autocracy that he wouldn't change and the people got mad at him and therefore he lost his throne but he lost his throne but something else happened something that I don't think should have happened on the sad night of July 17th 1918 was the night that the royal family the whole royal family was executed by the Bolshevik party They executed the whole family so that there is no possibility whatsoever for the family to take over the throne again and for all of this mess to happen. However, when I say they killed the family, I mean they killed everyone. They killed his wife and his five children. The oldest at the time being 22 and the youngest being 13 years old. They sent the family into... A basement of a house. And the family was in the basement. And that's where they were shot to death. I don't think it should have ended that way. But that's how it ended. yet. If you like this video, leave a like. If you didn't like the video, you know what to do. Leave a comment down below if you liked the video. And if you didn't like the video, better watch out. Oh gosh. <laughs>